Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE's special program series, Women of the Cloud, brought to you by AWS. I'm your host for the series, Lisa Martin. Very pleased to welcome Rochelle Manns to the program, VP of North America Cloud Platforms at Converge Technology Solutions. Rochelle, great to have you on the program. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Lisa, excited to be here. Tell me a little bit about you, a little bit about your role so the audience gets that understanding. Um, sure. Uh, so my role here is to help our customers um, migrate to uh, public cloud or, or adopt um, public cloud as part of their overall digital transformation strategy. I've been in this role um, a little over two years, um, supporting our, our customers and, and our organization as, as a whole. Um, my background in technology, I've actually been a, a woman in technology since 1989. I'm one of those rare breeds that from a very, very young age, I knew um, I loved computers and, and always wanted something something to do with it. Um, the last uh, 10 years of, of my career really has been working with uh, clients and, and um, uh, companies in the, in the industry uh, with disruptive technologies, adopting new and, and emerging uh, technologies and, and cloud has been my focus for, for the last two years. But you're an OG, it sounds like, when it comes to tech. That's outstanding. I am. It surprises a lot of folks. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes it surprises me as well, like how long I've been doing something, and I'm sure the same for you. But you have such wisdom and such experience that I would love to be able to share with the audience. Talk a little bit about some of your recommendations, be they tactical, be they strategic, for those in the audience watching who really want to grow their careers in tech and climb that ladder. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, our younger generations right now have, have um, I think, a little bit of an easier path to, to take than, than some of us have. Um, with the amount of information that's out there, the access to, to information um, and the opportunity, I think um, one of the biggest recommendations that, that I can put out there is to always continue learning and find a mentor, find a sponsor. Um, you know, I... With being a female in tech, um, there weren't that many when I started out in the industry, and it's just I get amazed um, every time I meet another another female, and whether she's been in the industry for you know twenty years or two or five years, um, it's just exciting to see and listen to the stories of other people's paths and their journey. So mentor and and your tribe, you definitely need your tribe. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, something I didn't understand until a few years ago was the difference between a mentor and a sponsor. And it's so incredibly important to understand the differences between the two, how they can help you le get leverage in the career path that you're on. But but people need to know you you have a network. It's there. You might not think you do, but it is there. And think about those who are mentors, those that can be sponsors to help elevate you along your journey. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I, I think about I have three three really good friends um, that we've grown up in the industry together. Um, but the sometimes even having those three really good friends, we went through many things by ourselves that we didn't have to. As you mentioned, it it it, it took me longer than 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 I should to understand that I have someone that we can lean on. Sometimes just having those conversations and saying. Is this what I should do? Is this something, you know, or did did that just happen to me? You know, um, and having those that that mentor and and that uh, partnership with someone that they may be in your organization, they may be outside of your organization, but definitely that you can have those candid conversations about what your growth or goal, what you'd like to strive for. Um, you know, especially if it's something that may on the surface appear to be out of out of reach. You know, if you have have someone that is maybe not as invested in what you're trying to achieve, but can look at you and have that objective conversation, um, I think makes makes all the difference and makes all the difference in the world. It does. And it's it's a little bit about vulnerability, about raising your hand, saying, hey, I'm very interested in this. I may not meet every single written criteria in the job description but I have an interest and a passion. Can you help me navigate the, the path to in order to get there? It's part of it's just really raising your hand. 
It's that's such a such a great point, Lisa, because in some ways we can't be vulnerable because we are underrepresented as as women in technology. Um, but at the same time, we have to have that ability to have those same conversations that, you know, I don't know everything. Can I do this? What do I need to learn? So it it really is finding that that balance. And when you have a mentor um, that can help you in that area, um, that's the way you can show that vulnerability without um, without looking like you don't have strength. Right. There's a balance there for sure. Speaking of that vulnerability, diversity, we talk a lot about diversity when it comes to technology. There's a lot of strides being made. There's also some challenges. There's some gaps. What are some of the things that you see from your lens, from your seat with respect to diversity and some of the challenges that are still out there? Yeah, I I look at companies like AWS with much respect on where, um, you know, their diversity um, and inclusion goals, it's not just a checkbox. You can actually see that when it is part of the culture, the room looks diverse. There are so many companies that have have the diversity and, and inclusion goals, but when you go into the room or you or you're sitting in a meeting or you have a board, it is it's it's still it's it's still not seeing yourself in that in that room. Um, I go to a lot of conferences. Uh, attend um, attend a lot of meetings and, it, and it's still surprising to see um, you know the lack of minority representation in leadership and the lack of women in in, in leadership. So while there's been amazing strides um, that we've seen happen, you know particularly like I said with companies like AWS, um, we've got a long way to go. Um, and I think you mentioned the difference between a mentorship and, and sponsorship. That's one thing within these organizations, particularly in leadership, there there needs to be that sponsorship of of the individuals in your organization that can help change what the landscape looks like at the top through your leadership. You'd be surprised how um, problems are solved differently. Problems can be solved more quickly. And talk about innovation. When you've got more a diverse lens, um, there's more ways to innovate if you've got different people bringing different perspectives to the, to the conversation. So um, looking forward to seeing that continuing changing of, of the landscape when I look inside the room and, and I count. <laughs> I do the same thing. And there's so much value in thought diversity for organizations and the data clearly speaks for itself. We, we can't have a tech conversation without talking about data, but data demonstrate that for organizations that have diversity emails, for example, in the C-suite, those organizations are more profitable. So bringing in different tracks of thought, different perspectives, the thought diversity, diversity in gender, diversity in other things is so valuable. It's invaluable to organizations in every industry. Yeah, it's it's invaluable. And it, and it's funny because our industry tech right now, I mean, data is, you know, it's the, it's the new water, it's the, the gold mine, it's the asset. Um, and it's it's funny that in this area that the data is is almost ignored. It's it's the data proves itself. So it doesn't have to be a checkbox for these you know diversity inclusion goals because the data is there to, to prove that we're all here to be profitable. <laughs> follow that data. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes it seems so simple. Follow the data. And we we think the same recommendation holds true to, to any industry that any company in any industry that needs to be a data company to be able to deliver what the demanding consumers want, follow the data. It won't lead you astray. So I want to get though back to you talking about you and some of the impact that you've been able to have in your career. Talk a little bit about some of the specific success stories of problems that you've helped solve related to cloud computing. Yeah, this last, um, I'd say, 16 to 18 months for us as an organization um, has been amazing uh, for me as well as my team. Some of our, uh, you know, the majority of our success, we couldn't be, I couldn't be here having this conversation without my team. And for for us as as an organization where our heritage is legacy data center, and we've got customers that we've had a 10, 15, 20 year selling relationship with that now via our acquisition strategy and growth strategy, we're going to them and saying, let us help you with your cloud journey. And it's something that they haven't known our, our organization for in the past. 
And so when we go in there and, and meet with CIOs and CEOs and ask for them to trust us, to take them on this cloud journey. And many of our clients are, are what you term greenfield, that they've got very little um, activity in public cloud. And so it's a, it's a disruption. It's an internal disruption that can be a very emotional journey that has to start with trust because you transform so much of the business. And so each and every of our wins, particularly when we have, um, when we have wins with uh, uh, brands that are recognizable, particularly when we have wins against competitors that have been in the cloud space and that's all they do. Um, for me, I take that as, as a personal stamp of endorsement because we've, we've shown and demonstrated to those clients that we're the right ones to, to take them on that journey. And we've created that, we've created that, that trust. So um, for me, we've had some incredible wins um, with our clients and um, those conversations can get tough sometimes we're in, we're in the middle of a migration and um, the operational change that'll happen. And sometimes there's tough conversations to say, you know, you think your organization is here. It's not, it's here. And we're not calling that out to say you haven't done something. We're calling that out so that your journey ends where you'd like it to be, where we've all agreed for it to, to be. And so when we, you know, have that final party or have, you know, that final sign off at the end of the project, that that's, that's a personal, personal win for, for me. I, I, I enjoy solving problems and, and, and taking customers on those journeys. Solving problems and, and helping customers navigate the journey, whether it's the journey to cloud, the journey to digital, the journey to being more competitive than their competitors is, is just that. It's a journey. It's a multi-phased, multi-step process. And to your point, underpinning that has to be trust between the organization and the people that are working to get them successfully on that journey. It does, and it's it's funny. Some of the some of the conversations we're, we're starting out our our approach. Our team is very prescriptive, and we'll get a lot of customers that just want to go go go. And it's it's a uh, I'm I'm a uh, um, road racing as as my hobby. And so the old adage: sometimes you've got to go slow to go fast. And we we talk to our customers, and there's a lot of interviewing, and they just want to deliver. They just want to jump in, and we're we're like it, it is. We know this may feel like we're going slow, but if we can really truly understand what that business outcome looks like, if we can uncover um, how you can leverage your investment and your, your movement to cloud, many, many customers are looking at it from a total cost of ownership. Can I, can I get out of the data center? If just that moving out of the data center, if we do those interviews with your different teams, and then we can understand an area where we can improve a customer experience, um, you know, uh, make an offering that's been a, a cost center for you, a profit center for you. Those are things that we're looking for. So we really get to know our client's business. So it's not just about the technology or the destination. It's, it's what do you do when you get there? Um, and so having those deep conversations with, with our, with our clients is, is, um, the approach that we like to take. It's really about, to your point, it's about technology, but also processes and people. We can't forget the people part of this. Talk to me a little bit from the people perspective about how you see cloud evolving in the industry. Where are people involved? And what are some of the things that you're excited about in terms of the evolution of your role? Yeah, in, in some ways for both our, our team um, internally and when we're working with clients, people in operations um, tend to be the things that are minimized. It, it tends to focus a lot on the technology. And we like to tell folks, you have to operate in the cloud and operating requires people in process. And so the, the people we know, uh, individuals with cloud skills are very much high in demand. Um, and so how do you attract those skills? How do you retain those skills? Or how do you upskill um, the individuals in your organization? There's so much opportunity to bring people along. We go back to one of your earlier questions and, and you know, what's the evolution or roles that people can look at in, in the cloud? Um, individuals that are in organizations right now 
where there hasn't been much um, public cloud adoption, taking those initiatives, going back to another comment of learning, AWS provides so much free training and so much opportunity for individuals to upskill themselves to have growth in, in technology. And cloud is an area, um, you know, we're going through a recession. Cloud is an area that is still going to be um, one of the, the, the places that organizations look for answers to say, how do we drive innovation, right? How do we, how do we advance what we're doing from a, a profitability standpoint? And can we leverage, leverage cloud, to, cloud to do that? So upskilling and investing in yourself in those areas, is, 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 there's a great opportunity for that. There's a huge opportunity in upskilling and investing in ways to improve your own skills. My last question for you is if we think back the last few years, talk about some of the changes in tech innovation in the workforce that you've seen. And what are some of the things that you think are on the horizon? Yeah, so there, there's still a, a great opportunity to, to exploit cloud in, in general. I mean, we see so many companies, um, uh, software companies, looking at um, SaaS business models, subscription models, that's still changing. If we think about cloud economics and, and how, we, how, how we purchase today, there's still an evolution there. Um, but I think for me, being a, a self, uh, self-proclaimed tech nerd, um, everything that's happening with uh, uh, AI and ML from an advanced analytics standpoint, the good and the bad. I mean, I think we've got to look at the, the, the social responsibility behind this. Um, when you talk about models and and models themselves being diverse, if if there isn't diverse background building those miles, the the intentional bias gets built into into some of those. But then I look at the the advancements. Um, I mean, it's exciting. We're working with uh, with with one of our clients where um, uh, autonomous taxis is is something that they're trying to bring to market. You know, these are things that we saw in cartoons growing up that are reality and becoming reality in this day and age. So, you know, that's through um, AI and machine learning and just, you know, all of the new services that, you know, companies like AWS continue to bring out so that people can be innovative and, and, and develop. But it's just, that's the, it's, it's, it's exciting for me to, to see that across the board. So transportation from AI and ML, what we saw what came out from, um, you know, COVID and testing and the data and, and just the advancements of, of that. So there's there's so many different ways to apply, apply that technology. There is, the horizon I think is clearly bright. And thank you so much, Rochelle, for sharing what you've done, your experiences, how you're helping to make that horizon even brighter. We appreciate your insights. We appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us in the program today. Thank you, Lisa. For Rochelle Manns, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of this special program series, Women of the Cloud, brought to you by AWS. Thanks for watching.